Okay, so today we talk about functions. In Python, like other languages, we can also create functions and the definition of function and how we'll create a function is slightly different than other languages. So here in today's class, we'll see that how we can create a function in the Python, how we can call it, how we can provide the arguments into the functions and how we can return the values. So in this particular lecture, we'll talk about functions. Now to make a function, uh, we need to use DEF keyword. This is for defining. If we want to define anything, we have to use DEF keyword uh, in the function. So it is very much useful in the function definition. Now after that, we'll write the name of the function. And then in the bracket, like other languages, we'll provide the arguments on that. And then we'll use the column to write some definition under this particular function. Whatever argument we want to write, we have to write with the indentation. And that's all. This is how we can create a function. So it is a very simple way to creating a function. Now in today's class, we'll see different examples and we'll try to understand that how we can create the functions. Okay, let's talk about this. This is a simple definition of a function. Say hello. In this function, we doesn't have any argument. Okay, so if we are not using any argument, it means that it is, we have to keep it empty. We doesn't have to write void or something else, which we used to write for the other languages. Then colon and after that, with the indentation, we'll just write what we want to put inside the function. If we'll not write anything inside the function like this, it will provide you the error and it will ask you to write something inside the function definition. Okay, so we have to write something under function definition. So here we have written hello. Once we execute it, this function will be executed and how we'll call the function. So we'll call the function with the function name. So we are calling the function with the function name because it doesn't have any argument. So the argument is empty right now and then we'll run it. So it will give me hello, right? So it will be like that. This is how we can create a simple function without any argument. Let's see, we want to put some argument here. We have another function, def, then name of the function, and then the argument. So argument will provide. As you all know that each, every variable that will uh, create into the Python, we doesn't have to write the data type for that. Okay. We doesn't have to write the data type for that. So so here also we have not written any data type. It depends upon how we are calling the function. Itself. Now then we have the definition like hello percentage s. It means that we know how we can uh, concatenate to func to uh, uh, string, right? So we are using this and then with the help of percentage symbol and that name, whatever name will come, will come here. Okay. So this is the definition of it. And this is how we are calling it. So once we'll call it with the argument, it will just put instead of name here, this. 
to make it more simple way let's do it with plus operator so let's say if you have any string that you want to print and you want to print some sort of variable let's say you want to print name variable and we want because hello is a string name let's say we are putting as a string so we can do that right we can use plus and then we'll call the calling of the function let's say we'll run it you see the output is the same so about the function and how we are dealing with the function uh, uh, sorry about the string and how we are dealing with the string that we have already seen right so this is one way how we can do that and this is another way how we can do the aggregation of the two or uh, sorry uh, concatenation of the two, two string now this is about one argument we can add some more argument if if it is required now here this is a example of how we can put the parameter as a uh, reference right now here we have the definition this is the function and here we are taking a variable gets with the reference so what it will do is it will uh, uh, go with the reference and it will just take the kid2 as the argument as class and uh, here we are calling this particular function with some values on it so these are the different value that we are providing based on this argument that we are putting here so it is just like a uh, you can say uh if we don't know that which particular argument that we are keeping here so for that this is a real example for that now this will give you the uh, linus as a output because the kids will have all these values on it and when we are indexing with two it will go for linus right and if you want to give some more like zero it will go for email or if you want to go for the first argument it will go for tobias so this is how uh, the reference could be taken care here now in this particular example what it want to say is if we don't know that how many number of argument we required right so for that purposes we are using these uh, this way how we uh, means to taking the input let's say we want to take one input to input three input that we don't know prior so we'll use like this so it will make it as a reference and it will point to all the argument and whenever we require the argument it will pick up that a particular uh, uh, particular uh, value from that uh, from the list of uh, the uh, argument and it will give us the output okay let's go for the return that how a function could return so function will return with the help of a return function return uh, uh, keywords we have to use return keywords when we want to return something so here if you will see we are using def keyword then we have a function name and then the argument now what we are returning we are returning num1 plus num2 right so here what we are doing is we are putting the values either a numeric value or the uh, string value whatever value you want to put we can put there and concatenation will concatenate it if it is a numeric value it will just add addition if it is a string value it will just a concatenation and make make it as concatenation and return will give you the value right so just like here we are printing it instead 
we are returning it. We are returning the value. So whatever value you want to return, you can return it. So this is your return statement. So here, first we are taking numeric value. Now we are taking a string value. So whatever value you want to take, you can take. This add num, we can do it like that also. So we are calling it and because we know that it is going to return nine, you can put it into the any variable and then you can print it. That also we can do. So if you want that, because it is returning the value, definitely uh, you can uh, use some variable to catch that particular value because this function is returning something. So that you can save in some sort of variables and then you can print it. So all these things are possible in uh, Python and it's very easy because Python is a language which is very easy to understand. And just like uh, our uh, a talking language, right? So how we talk, it is like that. So it is very easy to understand. Now, if you are using two, what? Uh, to a string, so definitely it will just add up those two strings or the concatenate these two strings. Okay, uh, let's see another function where we'll use uh, some loops and we'll use the break statement and let's see how it works. This is an example of finding a prime number, means we just uh, check the prime number whether the number given is a prime number or is not a prime. Number. So we define it, after defining it, we have a loop. This loop will go with a range from two to the given value num. And the variable is there n, it will start with value two and it will go up to num. Now we'll start with the entered value and we'll find out the modulus of it. If it is zero, we straight away say that because we are getting zero means it is divisible by two, then it is not a prime. Number. Then we'll break at that particular time and we'll not going to uh, uh, go for the loop again because break will work for that and we know how we can use the break. Now, if you are not, if, if this if is what uh, is not satisfied, then we'll go to the else part, right? And we can say that num is a prime. Means we'll go into that particular uh, loop for up to n value up to nine, up to num. So let's say if I have given num as five, so it will start with two. So five divided by two, which is not equal to zero, it will go again to the loop. Then three, five divided by three is not, uh, sorry, five modulus three, it is not equal to zero, then again it will go to the loop. Then n value will become four. Five uh, modulus, uh, five modulus uh, four, uh, which is again not equal to zero, again it will go to the uh, uh, loop and it will check it. Because we are going up to num minus one, it means if I am giving the value five, it will go up to the four. So because we have already reached four, it will go out, right? And in that way, once it will go out, it will go to the else part and this else part is going to execute. It says that, and this particular else part is for for loop, okay? We, we have uh, talked about that earlier, that how we can use the else into the for. So if it is not satisfying, then it will go to the else part and it will say that, that num is a prime number. Means it is not divisible by, zero to n minus one means definitely it will dis divisible by itself. So in that way. Now we'll just execute it. So the first one is 16. We know that 16 is a not a prime number because it is divisible by two, divisible by four, divisible by eight, right? Uh, in the same way, if we are giving 16, 17, we know that it is a prime number and it is giving the result as 17 is a prime. Note how else line up under for and uh, not for if. So as I told you, this else is not the part of if, this else is the part of 
for loop and we have already seen the example related to this now the same program uh, can we do with uh, other uh, logic so this is another logic how we can find out any number is a prime number or not so for that we have imported a class of math and we try to use some functions related to that so this is uh, the math uh, class object that we have imported here then the definition is is prime is prime we have seen earlier so it is is prime 2 then we are putting the argument here and we have a if statement if num whatever num is it is uh, modulus with 2 if it is 0 and num is greater than 2 then it will return the value false will interpret later on what is false and what is true then we have a loop which will go from i in the range of 3 and it will go for the square root of that particular num plus 1 and comma 2 means it will go for the 2 uh, two step at a time the range will go up to two step at a time and it will go up to the square root plus one let's say if we, if we are talking about uh, uh, the value uh, let's say 16 so it will not go up to 16 instead it will go to the uh, 4 and 4 plus 1 it will go to the 5 up to the 5 so this is also a way how we can find out uh, number is a prime number or not instead of going up to that particular number we'll go up to the square root of that particular number right and uh, the logic is same there is a modulus with the i if it is zero then we'll return false otherwise we'll return true so once it is true it means that the number is a prime number it is false means number is not a prime number right so is number 18 so it says that it is false means it is not a prime number if we'll say it is 19 let's say we'll just execute it it says that it is true because 19 is a prime number so this is how your uh, logic is here we have used the math or uh, math uh, method here which is called sqrt method with the math class now let's see about the default argument so what is default argument default argument is the argument will be used when we do not provide any argument to the function so let's say if we have only one argument in the function and we'll make it as a default one and if you are not putting any argument on that so it will take the default value at the same time if we have two variables the two argument and one argument we have make it as a default argument so that function will run with one argument call as well as function will run with two argument call. because if we're putting one argument call it will take one argument and one argument it will take it as a default otherwise if you are putting the value instead of a default value it will take the value that user is giving if user is not giving any value it will take as a default value Okay. so just take an example here here we have a variable country and we have given a default value to it is Norway now it is printing I am from and the country name okay let's say the first one I am calling with the argument so it is giving me it is overpowering this default value and putting the country as Sweden and it is giving the output as Sweden now if you're putting India it will giving uh, it will putting the, uh, the argument in the country as India and it is giving the output as this that I am from India let's say we have a function without the argument so it will take the default value here and it will give us the output as Norway because Norway is the default value so it will take the country argument will take Norway as the default value because it didn't get any value from the user the same thing if you are giving Brazil, this will be uh, given to the country and it will be uh, allocated to the country variable and it is printed. 
so this is the example of how we can make a default argument now let's talk about can we pass the object into the argument objects means we know a string is an object i i can put number or i can put list or dictionary or tuple or set whatever object can i put the object yes i can put the object as an argument into the function so this is a example of list how we can uh, put the list into the argument now this is a how we can define a function def in the function name and the variable name this variable we are actually putting the list there okay now this particular list because it is a list which is called fruits that we are putting in the food it will go from x to food and it will print the values of the list okay so this what it is doing is it is taking list as an argument and it is just giving the output of all the value into the list so it will give you the value apple banana and cherry into the list because we are putting the list into the argument so because as we know that in the python we do, do not define any data type right so what is the type of the food here the type of the food will be list it depend upon how what value we want to put into the function uh in the function we have a keyword called pass let's say we want to make an empty function empty function means the function doesn't have any uh definition on it so because python doesn't allow empty function we can use pass keyword here if you do not want to define the function we can use pass keyword here so this pass keyword will not give you any error it will not use the pass keyword so definitely it will give you the error so instead we'll use the pass keyword this pass will just pass it right so we have defined the function but what is in the definition pass so pass will just pass it it will don't it, it doesn't do anything now this is an example of recursion function we know what do you mean by recursion right recursion means a function calling itself so the function calling itself it is called recursion let's say this is a a function where we are adding the values so we have a function named try recursion what it will do is it will take the value let's say we are putting 5 so it will add 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus plus 1 up to k is greater than 0 so it will go up to 1 and it will just add up all the values let's say we are putting 10 it means it will add 10 9 8 7 plus 6 plus Uh, five plus four plus uh, three two plus one. So all these things will be done. So it will, how we can uh, define it? We can define it this way. So if k is greater than zero, then the results will be k plus try recursion k minus one. What will happen here? Let's say I am putting five. Let's say I am putting five. Five is greater than zero. Yes, it is greater than zero. Then result will be equal to five, right? plus then it will call the try function again so it will go four then we will call again four it will go for four plus then it will call again with three so it will be three three plus then it will go for two then we will we'll call two then two plus then it will go to one then we will call one then it will be one plus then it will call zero because zero is not greater than 0 then it will go to the else part and it will result as a then the your result is 0 here then if it will be done with that then for the k equal to 1 it will print the result 
then for k equal to 2 it will present print the result in that way so it will start with that uh, start with a value what is the value here is it is returning it is returning value from 0 then sorry uh, 1 then 3 and 6 then 10 then 15 and then 20 for 6 so what we can do here is so this is the value with that so 6 plus 5 it will be 11 plus 4 it will be 15 plus 3 it will be 18 plus 2 it will be 20 plus 1 it will be 21 so this is how you are getting 21 at 1 15 and then 10 and then 6 and then 3 and then 1 because when we are calling recursion it will go to the last first and it will then it will come up just like a stack right so in the stack what we are putting we are putting the value 6 plus then 5 plus then 4 plus then uh, 3 plus then 2 plus and then 1 plus because 1 is plus 0 so 1 will be pop up then after that 2 plus 1 will be pop up then 3 plus 3 will be pop up then 4 plus uh, in that way it will be pop up and you will get the result so we know that how we can handle the recursion we have to handle the recursion with the help of a stack so recursion also can be done with the help of a uh, with the help of the python 